We'll want to solve part A by first drawing a little diagram. Now the reason we're going to draw this diagram is to figure out whether we're dealing with a reflective coating or if we're dealing with a non-reflective coating. Now as you can see here, the index of refraction is smaller than the index of refraction for oil, but down here for water, this index of refraction is less than the index of refraction for oil. What this means is we're dealing with a reflective coating. So we can use these formulas for our constructive and destructive interference. What we're going to do now is rearrange so that we can solve for the wavelength. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the constructive formula, the constructive interference formula, at different m integers. So we're going to plug in different values for this m variable right here. Now right here, I just want to remind us that the visible light spectrum ranges from 400 nanometers, which is the color violet, all the way to 700 nanometers, which is the color red. So the first thing we're going to do is evaluate when the integer is zero. So here we have two times the thickness, and we were told that the thickness was 280 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. And we multiply that by the index of refraction for the oil film, which is 1.45. And we're going to divide it by, and we said that we're evaluating for when m is zero, and we're going to add that to one half. This gives us a wavelength of 1,624 nanometers. So this lies beyond the visible light spectrum. This is in the infrared. This is an infrared wavelength. Next, we'll go ahead and evaluate it when our integer is set to 2. So once again, we have the same variables in the numerator. The only thing that changed was m is now equal to 2. When we go ahead and solve for the wavelength, we'll get a wavelength of 325 nanometers. Now that doesn't quite reach our criteria that we want. We want the visible light. And 325 nanometers is a little bit less. And once again, we're trying to evaluate for colors because part A is asking the wavelength and the color. So we know that we're dealing with something in the visible light spectrum. How about if we evaluated when m is equal to 1? So once again, the only thing that changes in these variables is our m value, and we set that equal to 1. And this time, we find that we get a wavelength of 541 nanometers. And that fits the bill here because it falls within the 400 to 700 nanometer spectrum right there. So this is the color green. So green light will be most strongly reflected. And the reason is because we're using the constructive interference formula. And when we have constructive interference, we're going to see those colors form. We'll see these bright fringes. This time for part B, we're going to be using the destructive interference formula. And once again, we're going to be using the same technique where we'll evaluate it at different integer values. In this case, we'll do it with m is equal to 1 or m is equal to 2. We can't use 0. Otherwise, well, we can't divide by 0 if 0 is in the denominator. So we'll go ahead and evaluate when our integer is 1. And this gives us 812 nanometers. So that doesn't quite fit the criteria we're looking at. But what if, what if we use m is equal to 2? Well, this gives us a wavelength of 406 nanometers. So this works. So violet will be most strongly transmitted. So it's transmitted because we're using the destructive interference formula. So that means we're not going to see this color at all because it's getting absorbed by the film. 